Today I am going to discuss the topic intraembryonic mesoderm and another short topic or short note that can come from this area is the somites. So what is the intraembryonic mesoderm? As the name suggests it is the mesoderm that is developed within the embryo or inside the embryo. It is formed during the third week of the intrauterine life and as we know by the third week the embryonic disc will be a trilamin germ disc. That is, it will be having an ectoderm, mesoderm, and an endoderm. E layers are formed in months like intraembryonic mesoderm in the formation of months. That is, gastrulation and the process is the months like that. Now, we have gestation in the third week, gastrulation process is the process. And all the three germ layers are being formed from the primitive strip. Soon after the formation of the procaudal plate, the craniocaudal axis of the embryonic disc is determined. So, the procaudal plate is the head part of the consideria. So, after the formation of the procaudal plate, the cells at the opposite tail end of the embryonic disc that is the epiblast cells, they proliferate. In the tower, you elevation form chain, other than bulging form chain into the amniotic cavity. That is the primitive streak cells. In the but the third week, primitive streak cells proliferation. And these cells proliferate in order to replace the cells of the hypoblast. Primitive streak cells, epiblast cells, are if you proliferate the hypoblast cells in replace it. and thus form the definitive endoderm. In the gastrulation, the first germ layer is the definitive endoderm form. Again, some of the primitive streak cells, they continue to proliferate and they lay down a new layer in between the epiblast and the newly formed definitive endoderm. A epiblast in the newly formed definitive endoderm in the layer in the layer the layer is intraembryonic mesoderm. So, endoderm is mesoderm. In the last end is the ectoderm. So, the cells from the primitive streak itself continue to proliferate and replace the epiblast to form the definitive ectoderm. I'm going to definitive ectoderm die. So, in, in the process of gastrulation, first of all, a definitive endoderm is formed, then the intraembryonic mesoderm is formed and the definitive ectoderm is formed. So, we understood how the intraembryonic mesoderm is being formed. So, this is what we call intraembryonic mesoderm in the definition. Intraembryonic mesoderm is the mesoderm developed inside the embryo during the third week of intrauterine life formed by the proliferation of the primitive streak cells. And primitive streak proliferate and lays down a new layer in between the epiblast and newly formed endoderm to form the intraembryonic mesoderm. Actually, e endoderm and ectoderm and intraembryonic mesoderm throughout the embryonic disc carnilla. E mesoderm lack in three main regions in the embryo, embryonic disc. Our procaudal plate, cloacal membrane, and the notochord. So once again, the regions in which the embryonic disc lacks mesoderm are the procaudal plate, cloacal membrane and notochord. Considering the procaudal plate, first of all, mesoderm may extend cranial to the procaudal plate. But the procaudal plate in the ectoderm and endoderm are contacted. Mesoderm is completely lacking in this region. Above our region, relatively thin they form the they form the buccopharyngeal membrane 
which later breaks down and forms the opening of the mouth. Next case is the cloacal membrane. Any cloacal membrane is formed? Some of the intraembryonic mesoderm arising from the primitive streak. They pass backwards to the connecting stalk. And so here an area caudal, just caudal to the primitive streak is left behind without any mesoderm. That is procaudal plate is just diametrically opposite item tail end le kaanana portion aanu adana cloacal membrane aa region aanu cloacal membrane form cheya and the cloacal membrane will be the opening of the anal canal procaudal plate and the cloacal membrane the next portion that lacks the mesoderm is the notochord which is which is formed by the elongation of the primitive streak along the axis of the embryonic disc and the notochord then serves the mold for the formation of the vertebra. So, next one. Next is the subdivisions of the intraembryonic mesoderm. The mesoderm on either side of the notochord is uh, called as the paraxial mesoderm and it is a thick layer comparatively, whereas the mesoderm farther away from the notochord and laterally is called as the lateral plate mesoderm which is comparatively a thinner layer whereas the mesoderm which is situated between these two are called as the intermediate mesoderm next is paraxial mesoderm in paraxial mesoderm the cells are homogeneously arranged but later it gets segmented and it is converted and according to the segmentation or uh, according to the extent of segmentation it can be classified into somatomias and somites that is the partially uh, segmented ones are called as somatomias and the uh, uh, distinctly segmented ones are called as the somites so what are somatomias somatomias are the loose mass of paraxial mesoderm that is formed along each side of the neural tube at the end of third week and these lie in the head region as rounded structures and gives rise to the structures at the base of skull and also muscles of head and jaw region. Next, what are the somites? They are somites are paired masses of mesoderm, paraxial mesoderm distributed along the neural tube and they eventually give rise to several structures. Somites are found in 40 to 45 pairs and they appear in the 20th to 30th day of development that is in the 4th week of development. So, the 4th week of development is called as the somatic period of development. And somite appears as a triangular structure with cavity but for the sake of understanding we can consider somite as a square and we can divide it using a diagonal from drawn from the top right to bottom left portion and uh, we can uh, divide the square somite into two triangles such as uh, we can uh, consider the upper triangle to be the dorso lateral portion of the somite and the lower one to be the vendro medial portion of the somite then considering this picture we can say that the vendro medial portion is called as the scleroderm and the dorsolateral lateral portion is called as the dermomyotum and in the dorsolateral lateral portion the medial portion of the dorsolateral lateral portion gives rise to the myotum specifically and the lateral portion of the dorsolateral lateral portion gives rise to dermatum specifically now the what is the sclerotum the cells from the sclerotum migrate medially and lie on either side of the neural tube to give rise to vertebral column and ribs whereas the lateral part of the dorsal dorsal lateral part is called as the dermatome and the cells of this part migrate and uh, come to line deep to the surface of the ectoderm covering the body and gives rise to dermis of the skin and subcutaneous tissues and uh, obviously the medial part of the dorsal lateral portion which is the myotum gives rise to muscles striated muscles of the trunk and diaphragm the somites are uniformly distributed through the body that is in the cervical thoracic lumbar sacral coccygeal regions one spinal nerve supplies each myotum that is each somites are supplied by one spinal nerve 
and another important point is that the location of the somites the cervical somites or the first cervical somite to be precise is found caudal to the tip of the notochord and there is the occipital somites which are found in four to five layers are more cranial to the cervical somites and they give rise to tongue muscles except palatoglossus and to the structures at the base of the skull and the preoccipital somites which are three pairs in number they also give rise to structures of the base of the skull and the extraocular muscles of the eye bone and this preoccipital somites are found further cranial to the occipital somites that's all about the paraxial mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm and the formation of the intra embryonic coelom when the paraxial mesoderm undergoes segmentation in the somites parallelly changes also occurs in the lateral plate mesoderm that is small cavities appear in it and they coalesce to form one large cavity which is the intra embryonic coelom the cavity has the shape of a horseshoe and there are the the mesoderm surrounds the cavity which is initially a closed cavity and later it opens to communicate with the extra embryonic coelom once it opens and communicates with the extra embryonic coelom the lateral plate mesoderm is differentiated into two layers there is one layer which comes in contact with the ectoderm is called as the somatopleuric or parietal layer of intra embryonic mesoderm and the other layer which comes in contact with the endoderm is called as the splanchnopleuric or the visceral layer of the intra embryonic mesoderm both the splanchnopleuric and the somatopleuric layers of the intra embryonic mesoderm will be continuous with the extra embryonic mesoderm what is the significance of intra embryonic coelom intra embryonic coelom gives rise to the pericardial pleural and peritoneal cavities that is the that is the three main cavities in the body which accommodates the heart respiratory tube and the git and suppose we consider the part of the intra embryonic coelom giving rise to the peric pericardial cavity the somatopleuric mesoderm surrounding it will be giving rise to the parietal layer of the pericardium and the splanchnopleuric mesoderm surrounding this part of the intra embryonic coelom or the pericardial cavity will be giving rise to the visceral layer of the pericardium i hope you got it so next is the is about the location of the pericardium the pericardium will be formed from the part of the intra embryonic coelom lying in the midline and just cranial to the procaudal plate whereas the heart is formed from the splanchnopleuric mesoderm which is forming the floor of the pericardial cavity and if we observe we can see that cranial to the heart tube from which the heart arises splanchnopleuric and somatopleuric mesoderms are continuous with each other and in area is called as the septum transversum which forms the future diaphragm last subdivision of the intra embryonic mesoderm is the intermediate mesoderm which gives rise to the urinary and the genital system so that's all thank you